Well, we've made it through to another weekend and I've been doing lots and lots of tidying up in the greenhouse because spring's only around the corner. So we need to make sure that everything is prepared so we can crack on as soon as that weather is fit enough. We have had one or two casualties since December. It got really, really cold and we fleeced everything up and we also bubble wrapped it just to give it an extra bit of protection. Although for some plants, it wasn't quite enough. But when you get in minus fours and minus fives, you can expect a few casualties. But that don't mean everything's going to waste because these containers have still got perfectly good compost in them. So we're just picking out the plants that are no good. And then I'll run them back through the sieve, back into the tub, add some nutrients, and then that compost can be reused for the plants we're doing in future. Save a little bit of money by doing that as well. But we've got lots and lots of plants behind us that have made it through and they're looking perfectly healthy. I'll give you another quick look. So, as you can see, we've still got quite a few things on go. We've got carrots, cabbages, broccoli. That Chinese cabbage that we harvested by cutting top off and then letting it regrow has given us fresh leaves to harvest. There's broad beans and now starting to get nice little buds on them. There's red cabbage over there and then we've got a couple of cauliflowers. And at the moment we have no damage, which is great. Salad tub, again, is looking really good. The leaves are now a little bit bigger, so we could definitely harvest some of these baby leaves. And his carrots are looking pretty good too. So weather don't suit everything, but things like its onions, they seem to shrug it off. So I have the parsnips and this other container of spring onions as well, which you can see we've already harvested once and it's now growing back with nice fresh green tops, which is all we want from those. We've got nice little Savoy cabbages. Again, no damage. Roots are just coming through bottom, so we're gonna be thinking about moving these quite soon. And especially that one, because that's got quite big, regardless of cold. So it needs moving out of this little container now. And then we've got some more broad beans. Again, perfectly fine. A couple of flowers that we've grown on from last year's self seeders. Nice little Chinese cabbage there. We have had a couple of these that's run to seed because the weather's been a bit inconsistent over the last couple of weeks. So they've bolted, but we've still got one or two left. We've got a little spinach planter at the back there. A nice big Savoy cabbage in that container. And then it's container onions, which we're hoping to grow to be about this size. And that long trough of carrots. Plenty of good plants remaining in February. And hopefully it's gonna start and get a little bit warmer and lighter now. Just be aware that this coming week, they have forecast minus one which is not as bad as we've had, but minus one is still bad for quite a lot of plants. So make sure you've got your fleece on top. You don't want to lose them at this stage. We've got another tray of spinach as well that we've done. We've had this growing on indoors. But you can see that the plants starting to stretch a little bit now. But that's not a problem because these are multi-sown spinach. So what we'll do with those is we'll take a couple of bunches and we'll put them together into a pot and let that grow up into a, a nice big bunch of spinach. And we'll probably do that today. After we've sorted out all these pots. And all I'm going to do is just empty them into that sieve. Break them up a little. We're going to have roots in there, but they'll be sieved out. Things like that, we'll just chuck in compost bin. 
but it's still perfectly good compost so we don't want to waste it especially in this current climate when things aren't cheap and we know that this year things are going to go up as well so all we need to do with that shake it right through break them lumps up and then we'll just be left with a few roots and a couple of lumps that we don't want and we're left with a nice little bit of compost there and even the little bits that are left over we'll save and we'll either chuck those in compost as well or we'll use them to fill the bottoms of containers and the same with this one we'll just get it all in there take out any big bits of root to be fair there's not a lot in this tree and then shake that right through and just for the sake for a few seconds we've got a nice amount of reusable compost so we'll sort all these other trays out as we go through the day another thing you might be interested in little they've put the seeds back out again and they're a pretty good deal so if you look through and you find ones that are numbered one you can get four packs for one pound and they've got quite a few different varieties and it's not just vegetables they also have flowers as well so if you live near a little and you want some cheap seeds might be worth a look i got another pack of spinach that one's called matador and it was quite good last year and you seem to get a lot of seeds in those packs i've got some parsley get some of that started off indoors for now we're going to try watermelon again this year and this is a small one and it's called sugar baby so again quite a few seeds in there obviously we won't be doing anything like that until it gets quite a bit warmer but we might as well have a go since the seeds are so cheap and then I've got some Swiss chard as well. So little four packs for a pound. Go have a look. I've also got a few plants growing indoors as well. And I keep saying I'm going to get round to showing you how they're getting on. Obviously the ones we've got indoors are the ones that you can't have our side. Things like peppers. They'll not stand any degree of cold at all. It'll just kill them off. And because peppers need a long time to grow, we can't afford to risk losing them at this point of year. Or it'll just set us back two months. So we'll pop down to the house and we'll have a quick look at what we've got growing in there as well. So we're back indoors now and we'll have a quick look at what's happening with plants we've been growing under those really cheap to run LED lights. These are the red onions. And if you look at them, you can see how they're all leaning to one side because I forgot to rotate the plants at some point. So there was leaning towards the sun coming through a window. They will straighten back up, but the point is the multi sown red onions and they're growing really well. And that's all we care about. And we've got two sets of those on go, and these were directly under light. So you can see that. These are much straighter, but they are working. And we know we had lots of problems last year with red onion sets, not really producing an onion of any size at all. Same thing happened the year before, and that's why this year we're doing them from seed. We've had some more peppers germinate as well. And these are coming along really nice and they're not stretched, they're not getting leggy. Because what we've done is we've raised them on a little box so they're only a couple of inches away from that light, which is what you need to do with your plants. And then they turn out like this. And we've got two sets of peppers and these are the really long sweet peppers. And these are the California Wonder, which is the regular shaped pepper. But neither one is stretched. So if you're putting anything on the lights, things like this need to be raised so there's only a couple of inches between the tops of these plants and the light itself and it makes for a better plant all round. We've decided to try some carrots in cells this year 
but they're not normal everyday carrots because they wouldn't work. These are those round ones and they're called Paris Market. So we put a couple of seeds in each cell just in case some didn't germinate and as you can see pretty much all of them have germinated. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to remove the weakest seedling from each cell. We want to just leave one per cell and if you take a closer look at them you'll see that some of them have now started to get the true leaf which is the furry looking one on your plant. So any that's got that leaf will stay and any smaller ones around it will get rid of and we'll see if we can grow these Paris Market carrots that grow into balls about the size of a golf ball see if they succeed in a shallow tree and of course we also did this one we just direct sowed some more of those Paris Market round carrots into this tree and it's not a really deep tree but there's plenty of room for plants that only grow to that size and we've got a few that are quite close together so we'll go through this tray as well and we'll pinch out any weaker seedlings and give the better looking ones a chance to grow and hopefully we'll get a nice tray full of round carrots. We also tried a few flowers and some's coming along really well. These are the best ones at the moment and they're the blue bedders. Really nice flowers that split off into multiple stems and have little blue flowers on top and they'll grow right through until the end of the year. So we're going to have to start and prick some of these out and move them on into their own little separate areas and definitely I'm going to have to do that this week because beneath those little seedlings all the roots are going to be getting more and more tangled together. And then we've got a little tray there and that's just got a few dahlias in it, red skins. Not a massive amount of germination, but there weren't new seeds, and we have got some. Next to those, marigolds. Again, not lots, but some, just to start us off in spring. And then the worst one of them all, which it usually is, is the pansies. But it don't mean we won't get more pansies from this tray. It's just that pansy seeds take ages to germinate. So we'll just keep an eye on those and get the other ones pricked out and moved on. And we've got a tray of peppers that again are coming on really well. They've got two to three sets of true leaves on each now so these are ready to be moved on into their own pots. But one thing you need to watch out for with your peppers especially when you're growing in house is underneath your leaves. If you look underneath you might just be able to see there's some aphids under there. And they'll drain all sap out of the leaves of your plants to the point where they'll die off. And they'll have come from the compost because when you're growing plants indoors the compost is warm. So that's going to cause creatures that's in that compost to come to life and start attacking your plants. So if you look at your plants, like I say any pepper plants, tomato plants especially as well, Keep your eye out for these little aphids appearing and nine times out of ten they'll be underneath the leaves where you can't see them so make sure you have a little look and you can get rid of them easy enough all you need to do is put a teaspoon of washing up liquid into about a litre of water and give it a good mix and then spray underneath the leaves of all these plants and that'll kill all those aphids off and save your plants at the same time and we've also got this one which we've already moved on into a nine centimetre pot and it's growing slow as everything will at this time of year because we haven't got any eating in that front room all we've got is those lights so a lot of time it's quite cold in there but at least these peppers are trying and we're still getting a jump on season which is the only reason we're doing it and then the last thing we put in there was some potatoes and these are second earlies so we've put them somewhere where it's not really hot but it's not really cold so room temperature is perfect for chitting your potatoes and getting them ready for planting out in a few weeks time and they've only been in there a week or so and you can see already 
that the chits are starting to grow. And that's exactly what you want them to be like, a greeny, purpley colour. And they're going to make strong plants. And they're kestrel. And we've also got some nickel in there as well. So overall, considering that we're using an unheated room with a couple of cheap lights that only run at 18 watts each, we're not using extreme amounts of electricity, but we are getting results, albeit a lot smaller than I would normally do. But everybody has got to pull a belt in this year with everything that's going off. And as far as getting a jump on season, we've certainly managed to do that. So you can see, despite the weather that we've been having, we've still got quite a lot of stuff that's looking perfectly healthy. And as far as I'm aware, we're past the worst. So we're gonna get fluctuating temperatures. It is gonna drop down to minus one now and again. We keep getting constant threats of blizzards and snow, beasts from the east too. But yet, it never happens. I think that's more in the Scotland area. But we will get some big drops in temperature at some point. We could drop down from six degrees to minus one overnight. But as long as we've got that fleece, which has served as well since December, we know that at this point in year, we're gonna be all right. And everything that we've got growing indoors is doing really well, as you can see. And we'll keep those in there until mid-April and see what the weather's offering then. Because we know once we reach May, we're completely past it and it's gonna stay consistently warm day and night. Your soil temperatures at night should be above 50 degrees every day. Once they are, you know that anything that you want to plant outside, it's all systems go. And then we can finally get round to filling all these raised beds with brassicas, carrots and onions. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and get these spinach repotted and bunched up so we can add them to all the stuff that we've already got growing, ready for spring. If you want to see what else we're doing between now and spring, then please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and we look forward to seeing you there.